Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. I lost you for a minute there, Rob. I'm sorry. You did. You did lose me. It sounded the, great, the though. Dark depths of what well, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you find a guitar that just has a few little resonant places where you know that note's going to fire off yeah. into some musical fireworks. Well, fire. Some of you will be breathing a sigh of relief at this stage that this is the last of our um, Gibson USA <laughs> 2018 videos. Uh, six episodes in all, starting with the Les Paul Standard and the Les Paul Traditional, going through the classics and the studios and the tributes and the faded's and then the three SGs and then the V's and the Explorers and finally, and really last but by no means least, the Firebird. Firebird. Firebird fi what was it? Fireball? What was the kids' program? XL5. Fireball XL5. Fireball XL5. Come on, Makara. <laughs> anyway, two versions of the Firebird, which I was a little surprised about actually, because a lot of the Gibson 2018 range had kind of uh, slimmed down and, and removed some of the uh, less popular options from last year. Um, EMGs and Floyd Rose, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so, whereas on the, the V and the Explorer, there were no studio versions and no HP versions or anything like that, the Firebird has been graced with a regular version. So, it's like a Firebird standard, or I think it's just called a Firebird. And a Firebird Studio. That looks beautiful. The Phil Collins signature series. <laughs> do, do, do the old <laughs> There's a guitar playing on my mind. But the chances are somebody who knows time. Phil Collins is watching Fire this video right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so look, this is proper. This is, you know, it's just how it's supposed to be. The reverse headstock, the really funky scratch plate with the Firebird emblem, mini humbuckers. The through body thing where the, you know, like the, 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 the neck is joined to this sort of slightly larger center, center block and then the wings are glued on the side. They've decided to go with just the, the flat scratch plate on the back, whereas on the every other Gibson guitar it's been slightly knurled. Has it really? Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. What the actual piece of plate, I bet that changes as they go through the year, slightly depending on what they knurled. run out of. Um, it's good, you just got to have an arm that's a mile long to be able to it play is, open chords. It is the longest reaching. It's weird as well, because all these Gibson guitars are the same scale length. So the distance from here to here is the same. But on some guitars, that is like here. I've completely gone, you know, here. And on this particular guitar, it's just further this way. So it feels like you're extending more. All guitars are equal. Some are just more equal than others. Said um, the man, George Orwell. Well, I just said it. No, who, said, who said that? Who wrote 19... Well, right, who wrote Animal Farm? Was that George The Orwell? Animals. Was it George Orwell? Yes, it was George Orwell. It was George Orwell. Didn't, isn't that a line from some... It's that from, yes. Some Men Are Born... I think it's from Lord of the Flies? I don't know, but it's a good quote to I say I don't think Rob and I are particularly expert on any kind of literature. Uh, well, Forsooth, sir. In I, fairness, I we've got a few magazines we're you know, pretty familiar with from way back when. But Funnily enough, I can actually... Proper English literature. To, not that it's of any use in my entire life, but I can recite about an hour of Shakespeare can or, or uh, Lewis Carroll stuff like "Twas brillig and the slidy toads did gyre and gimble in the wave." Lived? All Minzy were the borogroves and the momraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the claws that catch, the teeth that bite. Beware the jubjub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Pete's always looking out for the bandersnatch. Get a load of this! <laughs> Do you know where Lewis Carroll lived? Uh, down the road from me. No, in Guildford? Yeah, down the road from me. Hmm? You're down the road from me, you're like an uh, hour from me. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, yeah, in relation to Americans, you, want, you drive you know, for 10 miles and it's like 10 where, hours. You know where the nothing. castle is in Guildford? The <coughs> yeah, the way you took your trousers down in. Exactly. He, uh, <laughs> it's literally opposite that. And there's a little plaque outside that said Lewis Carroll lived here. I got one then, I got one. You know the guy mm. that wrote Tarzan? And the, sorry, the guy that wrote The Jungle Book? Oh, no, hang on. The Tarzan was a lord something or other, wasn't it? Jungle Book. Jungle Book, wasn't that Walt Disney? No, Walt Disney did not write the Jungle Book. <laughs> <laughs> the author of the Jungle Book uh, lived in a house uh, 10 minutes from my house in, lived in Brighton. A, house, a very big house in, in the, the country. country. So, where did the last five minutes just go? Well, Firebird. I recited some. <laughs> Firebird guitar, mini humbuckers. Uh, is, it, is it weighty? Would you say it's more weighty than, than a V or an Explorer? Or is the Explorer the heaviest one? I say one? it's. Bargain bucket KFC. Mm. Just because so most about, men. So it's about eight pieces of chicken. Most men are familiar with the weight of yeah. a whole whole family. Oh no, this is this is heavier than eight pieces of chicken. But 
<laughs> did you go for the apple pie or did you go? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe in America the bargain bucket is bigger than it is over here. What well, size is, beverage? Because that makes a hell oh, of a yeah, difference. If you had the jumbo Coke, then that would be about the same, I suspect. A quarter, a quarter, quarter Coke. Quarter yeah. Coke. Fiber. Uh, it's not that heavy, really. No, they're not, are they? None of these, no. none of these Gibsons. I mean, they're, they're, I don't think there's anything in the Gibson range right now, even the Les Paul traditional, that feels like some of those 70s Les Pauls that are a bit sort of infamous for feeling like a lump of concrete around your neck. So, yeah. anywho, you go to the Andersons website, a lot of these guitars are actually weighed and photographed individually, so you'll see. Um, Would you like some tones? Always. <clears throat> Let's just do that now before we start talking about something else completely random. I had to search for that <laughs> switch. Did you, did you I saw that, I wonder what you're gonna do. <laughs> Also, I think that would make a really cool tattoo one day. It's a great, it's probably the best Gibson emblem that a, they do. If you're a, a massive Firebird, Firebird fan, like, was it Johnny Winter was a big Firebird playing yep. guy? Yeah. Then yeah. I'd, I'd whack that right in my forehead, I would. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just it awesome. Yeah, could you, make that, could you make that bird? chord sound really good? Because I, I fluffed it a little bit just in the mix, <laughs> in, the, in the cut, make it sound really good for me. Thank you. Sorry? Is a firebird a real bird? Or is no, it it's a, a legend. Bird? It's, it's a Greek, it's the legend of the phoenix that burns and the ashes and comes back. Because it just looks like an eagle with pointy feet. Uh, I'm going to say. It's a lady it's... eagle. Hello. <laughs> 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 oh, or maybe a female episode. <laughs> <laughs> firebird. <laughs> play 10 to 52, yeah. sometimes 10 to 60. So I'm finding it quite difficult to play. And also the action's been set super mega ultra low because you can, because it's a great guitar. And I play with a little bit of a heft, like almost a Rick Graham, like kind of that. Ooh. In my Does action. he play with? That's how I prefer my action, you see that? Just Rick Graham cannot play as fast as he can. If you can get a finger can. under it, he can. He can't. Rick Graham is superhuman. And he plays that fast with a high action, does he? He plays with a high action, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anywho. Not mega high, just Jeff Beck high, you know what I mean? Hey Rick. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rick Graham versus Jeff Beck, go! Huh? Oh my God, that'd be a trade-off, wouldn't it? <laughs> really like that. Really like that guitar. Comes with the uh, mahoosive case. A coffin. Oh my goodness me, can't even lift it. It's got no guitar in it. Come on, Lee. Uh, so massive, beautiful, beautiful case included in Could the price. Could you straight arm like that? Says, and probably not, no. Uh, it's got Gibson written on it, which is just as well. Uh, and this looks great. It looks very cool. Can I, can I can I make an objective negative point? Yes. I'm going to. This yellow piping. What's wrong with that? It's I, always been there. I don't it? have I don't have a great taste in in, in colour coordination, but I just I mean I'm, I wear what I'm given by my wife or by Lee. So I, I hadn't I hadn't even noticed it. You but look at out. this yellow. You know what it you know what it is supposed to be, don't you? It should be white or it's it should be cream. It's supposed to be old white. Yeah, but it's it's yellow. But it's yellow. It looks like. Uh, Transformers well, toys from the 80s. If yellow. that's the only thing bad that Bumblebee. you can find to say about these guitars, I'll take that and party. I knew you were going to say that. Um, anyway, look, can I tell you about my guitar? <laughs> Seeing as we've talked about yes. all sorts of random <laughs> shit. Uh, 
So there is a studio version of uh, the regular Firebird. Now, this is a couple of hundred pounds cheaper, so you still get the case. Uh, it's still made in the US and everything. So what have they done oh, to... you've got the Golden Phoenix. Yeah, so to make it a little bit more affordable, you can see now we haven't got this sort of raised center piece of the guitar. We haven't got a bound fretboard. We've got P90s instead of mini humbuckers. Uh, we have got a non-reversed headstock. So you sometimes call it, which is bizarre, isn't it? Because the- Is it reverse reverse? Well, because the reverse is like a standard thing on the Firebird, what they'll call this is a non-reverse, which is like a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? So it's almost like a negative negative or a double negative, isn't it? Anyway, so as you can see, uh, they use the mini Grover machine heads on both so that you can get six in a row. Yep. Uh, it's the same basic feeling neck. Uh, I've got dot inlays. Obviously, you've got the crown inlays here. Um, it feels uh, and plays much the same, but I it think, should sound I think a little different. Just personal point of view, but I think that one looks really cool. Yeah, so you've got the cold sunburst. There's a really cool thing where they've kind of like done like a sunburst neck as well. So you've got like the black spray around here, but then the natural here and... It's cool, you know. Uh, again, let's do the five second challenge on the keyboard. You got uh, five seconds to name the most famous Firebo player you can. One, two, three, four, five. Johnny Winter. Yeah. Dave Grohl, can I have Dave Grohl? You can have him. I can't think of, a, I can't think of many really famous Firebo players. Johnny Winter would be the most famous. I wonder how many people watching this even really that no, I think a lot of people own one and use it in the set, but they don't use it all the time. Yeah. I mean, for example, we, we all know that, um, a very famous blues player recently has released a kind of a fire birdie type thing. Bonamassa did a... Oh, yes. Should have gone with Joe Bonamassa. The, bon the Bonabird. I thought you were on it and you were like... No, I totally, totally forgot. And, <clears throat> and you're right, actually. He probably is right now. He's probably the dude rocking the Firebird more than anybody, isn't he? The dude rocking the Firebird. I mean, all American on us there. Um, so here is a clean sound with some P90s. <laughs> both together, let's do the bridge pickup, sorry, the neck pickup. It sounds fat, doesn't it? It doesn't sound thin and single Sounds like coily. P100s. I like it. It's got like a quacky sort of sound to it, hasn't it? Both together. Uh, take volumes and tones down and it'll go quieter and less bright. <laughs> wow, wasn't expecting that to happen. Um, let me try it. What I was trying to do is if you roll it off just a tiny bit, you get more of a tonal thing than a volume thing. If we gain it up using the distortion channel on the Marshall 2525, Definitely not driving the amp as hard as a humbucker would do. That's beautiful. Can't play any Johnny Winter stuff, uh, but it's probably something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can we swap over them? Yeah, so look. Again, as has been the theme really with, with the 2018 range, you know, less models, less colors, but hopefully more obvious choices and simplifying, you know, your choice decisions. Uh, so there aren't any kind of colors and models that aren't really suited to the vibe of the guitar. This is, this plays great. And you, these are definitely tens. What was it? Fireball? Firebird.
It's a very different kind of sustain, mm. but I, I love this one. This plays, for me, I prefer the feel of this. Brilliant. Probably just because it's got tens on it. It's just a bit more, to, to, it's a bit more work. I like this one I better. Like, I like, the, well, there you go. We found I actually like the look. I haven't really played this much yet, but I just like the look of it better. It's the Cadillac of guitars, isn't it? It's a great looking guitar. When you see <laughs> non-Gibson brands kind of rip this shape off, yeah. they <clears> never look right, do they? they no. look, and then you see this and you just go, yeah, that's right. Weird. Yeah. Weird. So now, here's the thing. I think guitar players don't settle on a guitar shape or a look until they get into a band and they want to stand out and have their own unique kind of vibe. You're not currently in a band, currently. I'm just going to criticise this as well. You're completely right. I'm not in a band. And currently. You know, you know I praised the V for being so well balanced. Yes. This has to be a, a Firebird issue, doesn't it? But it's it? not on a strap, Lee. It makes a big difference. If you put it on a strap, it's suspended from a different point of balance other than your leg. I just happen to have a black and white matching strap here. Look out, Gibson. Challenge accepted. Here comes Lee. Praise the V. But if you were in a band... If I was in a band... Which guitar would you pick to be your thing? Say it in three. Three, two, one. Les Paul. Strap. I thought you'd go strap. Yeah, thought... You went Les Paul. There you go. Uh, do you know what? I, I, would, I would probably... If I was in a band, I'd probably be one of those guitarists that wasn't synonymous with a particular guitar. I think I'd, I'd think I'd be a bit like Joe Bonamassa, minus the talent, but I'd just literally <laughs> try and change guitar regularly. Or like Richie Sambora, the legend minus of Sambora. <laughs> yeah, minus all the drugs and alcohol and... Uh, I like him for that. Uh, he had a, he had a the, bit back of in the a... day, he was just a legend, but yeah, again... Well, he had a hard deal you'd... with Bon, Bon, didn't he? Mr. Bon Jovi gave him a hard deal. Mr. Jovi. But right, hang on, let's just could... see what happens, ready? Live, on camera, for the first time ever. It stays where it is because oh, yeah. it's, it's what, the way it's designed. Um, so clever, these people. Well, no, it's just... <laughs> you need these people. Gibson know a little bit about... Do you think so? It's not their first rodeo. You know, they've, <laughs> they've built, <laughs> built a guitar before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Absolutely suits your new playing style. It's as soon as anything Eric Clapton based comes out, my inner 15 year old challenge ch channels through me. And you I were just happy go, with me playing Eric Clapton on a Firebird when yep. actually he played an SG for that track. Yeah, probably. And, but, Did yeah. he ever play? Have I ever seen Clapton with a Firebird? Don't think so. Nope. nope. It's a weird one, isn't it? For such an. I think you're right. I think it's the guitar that loads of players have used a bit but have never become synonymous with, other than probably Johnny Winters. Yeah. Comment section, please. You'll go, no, 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 there's such and such, which is cool. But anyway, look, so there we go, look. Phew! Gibson, USA 2018 range, done. done. Uh, did you enjoy it? I hope so. Uh, to round up the whole thing, uh, and I, you know, the, the, the no Sherlock piece of news from Captain Anderton is, <laughs> I liked them. <laughs> you know, like, I really did. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't miss any of the models that they've discontinued. Uh, I don't dislike any of the colours they've done or the features they've put on the models. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing some of the high performance stuff because that definitely yeah, does cool. look a bit more out there. I'm sort of 
that's potentially something we'll be able to critique a bit more. But uh, hmm. yeah, I like it. Me likey, likey. Yeah, so we can revert back from being all serious to being mm. like a bit more fun now. Woohoo! See you later. Uh, see you later. Bye! <laughs> Peter's gone so German camp on us today, oh, hasn't he? It's, 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 it's a lady eagle, and Hello. then it does an impression of a lady eagle. <laughs>